Hey all, Paul Roberts here with our next The Nature of Fishing Video Fishing Journal. My original plan was to introduce our next laboratory pond. This one, a 12 acre water body with a certain type of layout um, and associated food chain that I want to explore with you. Um, I've been wanting to explore this type of water for some time. Um, and that's because it's a water type that's very common in the bass fishing world, especially in a lot of the bass fishing media that's out there. It's also very much the opposite of our jungle laboratory ponds from last year uh, that we covered in video fishing journals 21 to 23, essentially. In terms of its structure and cover options, and in particular, its food chain. Oh, before we roll further, I feel I should explain why, and I guess that's pretty much what I do here, <laughs> why I focus on small waters. And I can tell you that uh, bass, wherever they're found, share basic character traits. And the conditions and circumstances that pretty much run the show out there are also largely shared across waters. Even the wide variety of prey and predator types that bass experience across all waters share many of the same characteristics and habits. Get to know what underlies these variables, uh, what they share, and will recognize their relevance in any bass water, regardless of size. And we'll recognize the largemouth bass's fingerprints, essentially, wherever we go. What small waters offer is intimacy with those characteristics of water and fish with a whole lot less running time, <laughs> okay? Uh, oh, and if you don't already know this, the waters I fish and shoot video in are public, often hard-fished waters. So what you see here, uh, I I'm hoping, is pretty much what you'll see on your own uh, public fishing waters. For this video fishing journalist, I'd said I was hoping to break right into our next laboratory pond. But as, as luck, and, and that is the weather, <laughs> would have it, strong winds are keeping me off that larger, more exposed uh, water body, leaving me to essentially make lemonade instead, uh, such as fishing. This period of time, though, inclement as it turned out to be, also turned out to be darn interesting, uh, offering some insights into the late pre-spawn period and the onset of spawning in largemouth bass. Uh, for this one, you might want to grab a snack and, and a cup of something. Uh, and you may want to even plan for a second viewing. Uh, a lot's come about this spring. Okay, a lot of stuff that's relevant to uh, our fishing for years to come. So to get out of that wind, we'll be hitting a wind-protected water. And you may recognize it as our recent fall transition laboratory pond uh, from Video Fishing Journal's 25 to 28. This pond is nearly surrounded by steep banks that can block much of that wind. And we might just be curious to see it in the springtime, since we spent considerable time there through the fall transition. And you might want to see Video Fishing Journal 26 uh, in particular to see what this little water body has to offer in terms of quality fish. Fishing wise, the conditions and circumstances for this outing are far from ideal. <laughs> clear blue skies and clear water. Uh, with actually only two to three feet of that clear water sandwiched between the surface and a dense wall to wall carpet of coontail. giving us high visibility conditions and super shallow water, a bear of a set of fishing conditions. If you're wondering what that might mean to our fishing, I suppose I could just leave you with the statement, depends on conditions. <laughs> but I'll spare you the pain I've suffered over the years from that statement and say I can now happily refer you to our fundamentals playlist.
The saving graces conditions wise on today's outing are some of that wind getting in and rippling the water surface in, in some places. And a spring phytoplankton bloom that clouded the water a bit. Uh, uh, phytoplankton blooms are real common in spring, especially following sunny periods. Okay, first things first. Let's place ourselves in the season for this outing. Uh, by calendar, our first step in ballparking the season, we should be in the late pre-spawn now. But to get a more accurate read means assessing the water temperature on site. What's interesting is how different water bodies heat. Uh, how different things, uh, and in this pond in particular, um, exposure to wind mixing and dense vegetation affect the heating. Now, it can be expected that larger, deeper waters taking longer to heat will spawn later than smaller, shallow waters will. But even my smallest ponds initiate spawning at different times too, uh, as much as a week to 10 days apart, even though they may be nearly the same size and even laying side by side to each other. Why? <laughs> the active factors here can be depth, um, aspect to incoming sunlight, that is the areas that are exposed to direct sunlight, uh, wind exposure, bottom makeup, and incoming water sources. These things all affect how individual water bodies heat regardless of size. This little three acre pond all of five feet deep, has a temperature profile on this day that looks like this. Uh, and I'll start with surface temperatures because they can be misleading. Surface temperatures peak at 60 degrees Fahrenheit under that glorious spring sunlight. So the bats are spawning? No. Close to spawning? Uh-uh. <laughs> There's more to the story than just temperature alone, surface temp temperatures in particular, and we'll get back to this shortly. At a depth of three feet, the mass of water above that uh, sandwich between that wall-to-wall -wall carpet of weeds and the surface is 56 degrees Fahrenheit, representing the core temperature. Surface temps run from 56, where that core water gets rolled up by the wind, to as high as 60 in calm, sunstruck shallows and the downwind immediate shorelines. Remember, warm water floats and gets blown around. This mid-50s core temperature is simply typical for this time of year here, uh, for the late pre-spawn, just about anywhere. Uh, the period when uh, the bass's behavior begins to show signs of shifting from feeding binge mode that we see in early spring toward spawn mode, when mature bass begin to shift focus from prey to other adult bass. Interestingly, in this densely vegetated pond, the water beneath that dense carpet of weeds measures a chilly 52 Fahrenheit at a five foot, that five foot maximum depth, which is not very far from that three foot level where we measured 56 Fahrenheit. That dense vegetation and the high banks nearly surrounding the pond serve to block wind mixing, uh, maintaining a, a near thermocline, uh, similar to what deep water would do in a larger, deeper water body. So doesn't that 52 degree Fahrenheit water along the bottom count as part of the core water, with this pond only being five feet deep? The core water is the layer the majority of bass likely spend the majority, if not all, of their time in. And in this pond, it's likely that three foot thick layer between the heated surface and that chilly protected layer uh, inside beneath that dense layer of weeds. So like in a deep water body, the deepest, coldest water essentially doesn't count for bass anyway. 
where that cold mass of water might factor in is if that cold water gets rolled up to the surface uh, via seiche conditions. However, owing to a given lake's particular layout, such events are uh, most likely to happen only in certain areas of a lake. The bass then either don't spawn there, it's too risky, or spawn in those areas later in the spawn season when things have really heated up or sage conditions uh, relax. In general, the bass in my small waters will initiate spawning about 10 days earlier than those in a larger, deeper water body do. Really large, deep lakes will hit their peak spawn a good month or more later than the smaller, shallower waters will. The onset of spawning for bass across such a big system, such a big lake, depends on the conditions present in the specific locale each group of bass reside in. As an example, bass in very large, elongated reservoirs spawn first in the shallowest upper reaches and latest in the deeper lower reaches. Okay, bringing us back down to local ground here, uh, to our little pond for today's fishing, we'll be searching for behavioral signs suggesting where the fish are in our spring season. <laughs> In my experience, um, and with a certain amount of speculation, it appears that the mid to upper 50s core temperature period here is when the intensity of the spring feeding binge seems to, what I call, relax. I say relax because those intensely heated and often small areas that become fish magnets uh, in, the, in the upper layers of water and along some shorelines seen in the early spring seem to dissipate, uh, to relax, as the heat begins to penetrate deeper into the water column. Uh, and with that heat, that heat distribution appears to go that intensity of feeding activity we see in the earlier spring. Uh, I suspect that those intense feeding opportunities relax as real estate expands with the expanding heat. Uh, at this time, too, small bass begin to appear in the shallows, uh, along with the bluegills, those uh, little heat pigs, <laughs> they call them, that have already been there. Those big, heavy-bellied, mature bass also seem to become harder to find, um, or harder to catch, uh, perhaps a little less ravenous <laughs> or inspired. Interestingly, what comes quickly on the heels of this relaxed period is that the spawn becomes imminent. Bass are soon to become less food oriented and more socially oriented. When I see that heat beginning to penetrate a bit deeper, uh, and in my generally small shallow waters, this depth appears to be about uh, three to four feet of water, um, I know that the spawn is not far away. I look for core temperatures in the mid 50s and temps kicking into the upper 50s at that three to four foot depth as the time I can expect the first males to be setting up territories and putting some beds down, or very close. At this time also, I begin to see adult fish, uh, among them the big uh, egg-laden females, holding high in the water column, suspended off drops, or relating to an object of some type. A few other things are likely occurring at this time too things that likely affect our catch rates. Mature bass appear to begin to group up more as they begin to gravitate towards spawning locations, meaning that they can become harder to find. There's a lot more bassless water, especially in terms of those heavy-bellied females that essentially found our lures for us <laughs> during the early spring binge period. This changes, of course, when the spawn starts and bass distribute themselves across spawning areas. Um, uh, see Video Fishing Journal number 17 for an outing in which we're forced to consider this apparent expectation of the bass. Feeding is still of interest during the late pre-spawn, of, of course. Uh, while males will feed little during the spawn period, uh, in part due to opportunity as mindset, it seems, Females are more apt to feed throughout the spawn, uh, not being completely confined to small territories like the males are. 
Um, but but the, tri the, the prey <laughs> that they're after has changed behaviors too. Bluegills, probably the most common prey type in most bass waters, uh, still heat seeking, crowd the surface of many waters just in time to make use of the biggest midge emergence of the year. These are also the largest midges of the year, and the bluegills are on them. Those big midges emerge from silty, mucky bottoms all over a water body, uh, distributing the bluegills all over a pond or lake surface, or, or in large lakes and in certain silt bottom bays. Gone or tougher to find are the intensely compact feeding opportunities that bass enjoyed during the early spring, that initial heat up or binge period, as I call it. Another sign that appears to coincide uh, with the penetration of warmer water into the depths is the appearance of large numbers of immature bass in the upper water column and into the shallows. So these are signs that we're now rolling toward the spawn. Uh, despite the spring cold fronts, uh, some still quite wintry, there is really no going back. Uh, the season is now too advanced the sun too high in the sky, and the nights too short. Winter is essentially gone, uh, at least uh, able to make a lasting effect. Lastly, before we hit the water and try to catch some of these late pre-spawn bass, I want to share uh, my observations and, and take on a recent question that popped up following the super cold fronts that descended uh, across the entire northern U.S., uh, striking as the spawn onset onset was imminent. A week before my shallowest ponds historically see the first bass beds being laid down, they received two frigid and snow-laden back-to-back -back fronts that dropped air temps as low as 10 and 12 degrees Fahrenheit and dumped 24 inches of snow. The question that began to fly around the internet was, will this sudden return of serious winter conditions kill the spawn? My answer was no, not likely anyway, unless of course this severe weather lasted for another month or more. And this is far less likely to happen this late in the spring season. And that is what the bass are banking on. It is true that temperature is a master factor in the onset of spawning. Uh, more specifically, the water temperature, and more specifically yet, it's the upper layers of the water's core that three to four foot depth I've determined uh, for my small waters. That's key. Uh, and this is likely true um, in protected areas, smaller protected areas, bays and coves, uh, uh, in, in larger lakes as well. However, there appears also to be what's called an endogenous, that is internal rhythm at work a biological alarm clock that goes off at an appropriate time for that water body. Uh, and this is not something we are easily privy to, e even when observing closely. Um, it's something for laboratory work. The inner workings, the, the gears and springs, of this internal rhythm are known to include uh, photoperiod, temperature, uh, body condition of the animal, uh, final reproductive tissue development, and a whole host of other selective pressures uh, essentially suffered and then passed on from the previous generations. And especially for the early onset spawners where we've been considering here, luck of the draw. Uh, this is the natural world after all. Um, a bit of gambling exercised by some of those bass in an attempt to get a jump on the season. The gamble is that early born fry, if they survive, can get a growth jump on the young of the year fishes that, that will follow them uh, and be in a prime position to eat them. <laughs> the risk, of course, is that inclement weather can wipe out that potential advantage, those earliest broods. Each year is different, of course as although photo period is constant and is the best thing to set a clock by, weather is capricious, sometimes extreme. And this is what we experienced this spring. 
how long did it take for the water to recover? When the alarm went out on the internet, what will happen to the spawn? I responded that spring has already sprung. It will win out. The sun is too high, the days too long, the nights too short to hold it off for long. And indeed, after the fronts had blown through and spring weather returned for a few days, I checked two of my shallowest, earliest onset, what I call reference ponds, that were part of my original set of spawn onset research ponds, uh, work that I'd done a number of years ago. And I found the first males with beds only a few days later than I would normally expect them, if I simply used a calendar. Uh, a calendar, of course, calibrated to the specific conditions of those ponds, remember. And there goes a bass. And a bed. He is on a bed. There's a bed right here. Just busted a male off a bed. You can just see the whitish gravel in there. That's cleaned. These early bedfish are just establishing territories are still spooky. They don't have any eggs to guard. So uh, parental investment is low right now. Now, the core water in those reference ponds was still a, a tad chilly um, in the mid-50s. Uh, not the upper 50s, I tend to look for to tip me off to the, the spawn onset. Uh, but uh, under that spring sky, that water was reheating quickly, uh, pretty much as I stood there watching. Interestingly, uh, no, fascinatingly, <laughs> the only beds I saw over the, the uh, late morning period I was there were only present along the west shoreline. I measured 58 degrees Fahrenheit at bed depth on that shoreline at 10 a.m., uh, surely to break into the 60s by day's end. Uh, how, how cool is that? <laughs> to quote the wise Dr. Seuss, it came just the same. Okay, enough background on what spring means to those fish. Uh, I hope it helps you in tracking your bass through the late pre-spawn and into the spawn seasons, uh, or that you at least find it interesting. Um, I, I sure do. If you find this kind of content helpful and want to support more such content, I've provided two easy ways to do it, uh, through the, the Nature of Fishing Patreon page and through PayPal. Uh, you'll find the links in the description below and at the very end of each video. And I now have a Nature of Fishing PayPal link button in the header at the top right of your screen. Okay, let's get a little fishing in during the late pre-spawn. Well, it's mighty calm all of a sudden. I wonder when that wind's going to pick up. goes a big wake. I don't think that was a breeze wake. I think that spooked from my cast. Dead stuff. That's a break in the breeze. Slow swim first. There's a fish. <sighs> Yeehaw. Not a big fish, but I will take it. That's a good sign. Twelve and a half or Oh man, I don't like these big hooks. On small fish, you can get darn close to the eyes. The black spots here are snail larvae. A fair amount of them here. This fish was potentially caught a while back. I wonder if I netted that one because that's a tiny little hook mark. All right, you're in good shape. Adios. I got a 
fish. Well, at least we need, you know, these little double hooks will work. Hi, little fella. Hey there, little fella. Hey, 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 hey. Don't hook me. <laughs> there you go. Filament algae is floated up. That's a mat right there. I don't know if I can even get in there, but we'll just do it. Whoops. There, we're on the mat. And we're going to not get in there because of all the rushes. There's a fish. A little tiny guy. <laughs> there was a point at about 55 degrees. I remember where... Oh, there's the tendon. Let's get under that. Where little tiny guys, where uh, they would suddenly start appearing on the shoreline. And I've caught several little guys, so they've become active. See how this goes. I might end up going with a weedless one. Of that slot. Yeehaw. Yeah, this rod is too soft. Man, you really, really took that. That's why I could feel the line. I could feel the line uh, rubbing in your mouth. Got some red teeth there still. Nice little 14er. Probably eggs. Let's see if you're feeding. Let's check it out. Why not? Eggs, food, what do we got? Eggs or food, what do we got? back nothing I don't know if that was just a poor sampling or again I haven't pumped bass very much so fish downwinds cleaner down there there's one I thought they're little guys all right. Heard me, little fella. We can fish around the edge of it a bit. We can't move right into it. Another little guy. Little guys are definitely happy. got cracked. Really got whaled hard. Yep, on the drop, on the splash and drop. Right out there in the middle of the, that flat on the other side of the... I should give him a different bait, but... There's, there's fish cracking out here. I think there are that was not a, a really small fish. Oh, 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 geez, wheat. Yeah, I got him. 
hooked him at the last second. Whoa, 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 whoa. get off my boot. Jeez. <laughs> All right. Ta-da. All right, I'm gonna drop an anchor. Okay. Double hook to there. There we go. Pretty pretty. Pretty thing. All right, love. Go. That's a fish. Random catches all day long. Thank you for that. Another one? I'll just keep you down. Alright. Come on. Thirteener. And uh, pretty. Pretty pretty. Adiós.